no direction. But in the case of pressure, we shall not say it has no direction. It has directions, but it has direction everywhere in all directions. Say for example, this is a fluid. You have kept a body here. On this point, due to this fluid, pressure is this way. On this point, pressure is this way. On this point, pressure is this way. So, it has so many directions. It's acting in so many directions. We can't say this is the particular direction in which it is a acting, right? It's having so many directions. So, we cannot assign a specific direction, moreover. Whenever you want to call a physical quantity as a vector, it shall satisfy the vector loss of addition, right? So, it won't satisfy that vector loss of addition. So, there is no point in calling vector and pressure as a vector it shall be treated as a scalar because it has so many directions and it has no specific direction. Vector is somebody who is supposed to have a specific direction. That's the first point that we would like to discuss here. There are some other points that we would like to discuss. As we have derived earlier, equation for the pressure as, as it is the force acting per unit area, force due to air column. So it's is nothing but the weight mg. Mass can be written like volume into density into g by area. Volume can be written like area into height of that column dc by area. I have derived this equation earlier. I am just doing it quickly for the sake of convenience. So, pressure depends on height of the fluid, density of the fluid, acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity is anyway constant. Density of the fluid is also constant. And so, pressure varies directly proportional to the height of the liquid or the fluid above it, right? Be careful, I am saying it is about the height of the fluid above it, right? It is not the height of the fluid in the horizontal direction. So, when you take a fluid, how much of the pressure is there in this direction, in this direction, it's not going to make a difference, right? How much of the pressure is there on the top of it, this much? That's all is having certain height and that will apply some pressure height. That height is important, but this horizontal direction things are not important for you. So, pressure is independent of the horizontal directions, right? Then, we would like to talk about one more property, this is the second property. Let me talk about the third property of the pressure. These are very basic things and we need to know about them to understand completely about the pressure right? When we say, I will just draw a diagram for you, right? So, let me consider a vessel filled with liquid, a fluid. If you are having a point here and if you are having a point here, these two point, at these two points, the pressure is different. At this point, as it is open to atmosphere, pressure is only atmospheric pressure, that is 1 atmospheric pressure at 1.01 into 10 to the power 5 Pascal. But if you want to talk about this pressure, you can see that the height of the liquid above it, right? And of course, this is open to atmosphere also. So, at this point, the total pressure is there are two pressures, one due to atmospheric pressure, one due to the pressure due to the height of this liquid, height of that liquid, density of that liquid and acceleration due to gravity. So, there are two pressures acting, P0 and HDG. But you know, P0 is the pressure acting on everyone in all of us in, over all the time. So, we generally don't take that for uh, say consideration, we take that for granted. So, we can generally say something like excess pressure acting on you or gauge pressure acting on you because you don't gauge the atmospheric pressure acting on you because you are all somehow accustomed to it, right? Is 
total pressure minus atmospheric pressure. You take off the atmospheric pressure, height of this liquid. So we consider only this pressure because this is the pressure that we feel excess. This is anyway is there that we don't feel it because it's there on us always, right from the day one, right? Therefore, day one of us. So this pressure doesn't uh, pressure depends on the height, not on the say horizontal uh, fluid, and we always try to measure excess pressure. That's the third point that I would like to talk. That's one more point that we would like to discuss, right? Let me tell you what that is. Yes, pressure is independent of pressure is independent of magnitude of the fluid, amount of the fluid. What I mean? Let me just draw a diagram to tell you what is that I want to tell. So imagine a container like this, another container like this, another container like this. In all of them, if the height of the liquid is same, say this is the same. This is the height of the liquid, this is the height of the liquid, this is the height of the liquid. In all these cases, as it is being appearing, it's all H. So at all these points, pressure is same. PA, if I call this as PB, if we call this as PC, at this point, at this point, pressure to all of them, due to all of them is same. PA equal to PB equal to PC. Pressure is independent of the amount of the fluid. One more important point or a simple point is pressure is independent of the shape of the container. Independent of the shape of the container. Of course, the above diagram itself says this. But I, let me just tell you by you by drawing some another simple diagram just for the sake of a convenience. So imagine there is a lot of fluid and uh, there are different kinds of capillary tubes or different shapes of uh, kind of things that were being immersed in it. This is one. This is another container. This is another container like a capillary tube. This is like a, a vessel with a long neck. In all of them, the liquid rises to the same level and the pressure is always going to remain same. So, pressure is not going to depend on the shape of the container, rather it is going to depend on the height of the fluid that depends on the nature of the fluid itself. So these are the important points that I would like to talk about. Right.